three, two. Hello, everybody. Hello, welcome. welcome. I said welcome. You said you were to... saying <laughs> She's speaking for me. Uh, hello. Um, holiday cocktails and cheese. This is one of our favorite classes combined into one. We always do a cocktail class. Sometimes we do a um, appetizer mm -hmm. class, and now we're doing easy, entertaining cocktails and appetizers all wrapped into one. So we're going to got a lot to do today. I'm really excited. I'm excited to eat these appetizers. Yes, I was going to say, are you hungry? <laughs> Um, yes, always. <laughs> my name's Sarah. This is Rachel. I realize we don't always introduce ourselves. <laughs> Who are these people? <laughs> okay. Why should we listen to you? Um, Rachel knows a lot of things about cocktails because she likes to drink them. So Correct. Um, I'm not certified in <laughs> cocktails. No, but you, you know, experiment a lot, so I've come up with a lot of things. Yes, I also teach the help teach the You and Yours cocktail classes, which I know some of you have gone to. Thank you. Um, and I always learn so much from the cocktail experts there. So. Yes. Um, I went to culinary school. I love to cook. And so this is just a lot of the things I've learned along the way. And so we're trying to do easy appetizers. Yes. Our point today is like the easiest way to entertain. Uh, step one by using your oven and not necessarily the stove. So there's not like mm -hmm. this mess on your stove. You just got everything out easy in the oven. Um, also, we're going to show you a little bit about uh, time management and how you prep your appetizer throw it in the oven, then you can make your cocktail. By the time the appetizer is done, the cocktail should be done to pair with it. Yes, Sarah's gonna really take the lead on the time management, because that's not always my specialty. No. I'll no. take like 20 minutes making a cocktail, like is it just right? Like, no. that's no. not what we're doing here. No. We're batching. Yes. Um, first little tip to entertaining is our little snack, because we have some things to cook. You don't have a cheese plate today right away. So, we gave you some chips. These are our favorite salt and vinegar chips. I'm gonna get a bigger bag. <laughs> we're going to okay, get a bigger bag. Um, our first tip was don't be afraid to serve like a nice quality potato chip. These are not just like Cheetos from 7-Eleven. These are nice salt and vinegar chips from Spain. They're fancy. They're delicious. And you can set these out while you're getting some things started. And the bag's impossible to open. So you're not the only one having trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't want to serve them in the bag. Just put them in a cute little bowl. This is Christina's salad bowl, so she doesn't if you know where come you to the, it. yeah, she doesn't know. She'll know when she watches this video. But here, now you can snack while I make the appetizer. Excellent. <laughs> this is our first cocktail, just to show you a little preview a of what preview. you're getting. But so we're gonna start with the spec wrapped dates. You'll have two cards, one for the cocktails, one for the appetizers. They look very similar, but the colors and the side of the paper, you know, match what we're pairing with. So we're going to start with the spec wrapped dates. Hopefully by now you have your oven preheated. I have a little toaster oven over here. I don't know if you can see it. Um, I put on the note to heat it up to 400 degrees. I did mine on 425 just because I don't need things to like speed up a little quicker for mm -hmm. the video um, so I can show you real time. But feel free to do whatever temperature feels right. Um, but we're going to start with the mini crema. Hopefully you pulled this out earlier. Um, I've had it softening for like 30 minutes or so, and I'm just going to plop it into a bowl. See, that's what it looks like. Yum. I'm going to chop up the caramelized pecans. Do you want to tell them what the mini crema is? Yeah, so the mini crema is one of our favorite new, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> She's a chef, everyone. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm sitting down. It's very difficult. I know, so I can seem taller. Yeah. That's the rule. Um, so Mita Crema is a sheep's milk cheese, super soft from Spain. Um, I featured it in a couple of classes in the past couple of months because we've just been really um, into it. It's super rich. Um, sheep's milk has some of the highest fat content of all the milk, so it's just super to talk above here. Sorry, <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just crunching. <laughs> it's just super rich and creamy. It's like super elevated cream cheese or creme fraiche or something like that. So um, I put this on my like smoked salmon bagels, you know, instead of yeah. cream cheese because I'm um, fancy. Um, but also great on its own. Like you can just put it on a cheese plate. Using it in cooking is great. Sarah's going to tell you about that. Um, and also we've done, so it's like a plain white log. You can roll it in like edible flowers or like what else? I don't know. Nuts. Nice caramelized pecans. <laughs> yeah, to make something that looks super fancy but tastes really good. And it's not one of those like weird cheese balls. Although no, I'll no. totally eat one of those too, <laughs> so no shade. This do you is, need a spoon? Yeah, I do. <laughs> Can I use your cocktail spoon or no? No! Uh, Sorry. Not 
dare her. Okay, well, Rachel's giving me a spoon, because that's the one thing I forgot. I have the mitta crema here. I'm just gonna add um, some of the caramelized pecans. I just did about half of the container. You can do as many as you'd like. I just did about half, chopped them up. Chef. Thank you. <laughs> We're just gonna mix this, and if your mitta crema is not soft, um, it'll get soft in a second. I mean, it really, there's such a small amount, it's not gonna take long to really get soft. It'll really be spreadable if it's at room temperature. That's when it'll be really easy. Okay, so you have your mixture. Now, which I would just eat like off of a spoon. Yes, that would be, be good. good. I'm gonna these like a little salt and vinegar yeah. and vinegar crema. Why not? Here, Thanks go for it. it. Oh god, I and got it. It's a little less soft than I want. Okay, yeah, excellent. I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways on how to fill the dates. So I gave everyone a piping bag. It's rolled up. Looks like this. Not everyone has piping bags all the time. Do you have piping bags around your house? Absolutely not. I do, of course. Because <laughs> you I make cakes casually. I make cakes casually. When your friend is like, I need a cake for my wife's birthday. And I'm like, okay, Rachel, sure. I guess I can do that. <laughs> like two days before, I'm like, Sarah? No. But I always have piping bags. But if you don't, I made mine a little bit smaller. I cut it with a knife. Just make it a little easier to work with. If you don't have a piping bag, I'll also show you an easy way to do this whole thing. But the, I feel like it makes you feel fancy when you use the piping bag. Yes. I mean, maybe not you, because you're just doing no, what, does. what works. <laughs> if your cheese is not quite soft yet, it's gonna be harder in the piping bag. Um, what you could even do is put the cheese in the piping bag, then like put this in warm water, and that'll help soften it. I'm just gonna see how it goes. Okay. So I'm going to take the top of the piping bag and roll it over, like when you're filling a Ziploc bag or something. It's like ASMR. <laughs> I have it over my hand here to kind of hold it, and then I'm going to put the filling in to my piping bag. I'm going to leave some filling out so I can show you the other way to do it. And then you have some dried pitted dates here. I just had some bacon wrap dates last night at a restaurant. I hope these are better. I'm sure they are. These are came pitted, so the hole is like through the center of the date. Mm -hmm. If you get a date that's not pitted, if you buy them yourself, what you'll have to do is cut a slit with your knife about here and then pull the pit out that way. It's like a long skinny kind of pit. But if you get them pre-pitted, it's a little bit easier to pipe the filling into it. Warm it up with your hands. I know, you can warm it, kind of squish it around. <laughs> okay, so cut the tip off your piping bag just a little bit, very small, so you can fit this piece into, that's probably too small, <laughs> into the end of your date. I promise I've done this before. <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> Take your piping bag, you have all of your filling at the bottom, and you're gonna twist, and this is gonna help to add more pressure into the piping bag, and then you're gonna hold it right where it's um, twisted, and then you're gonna hold it in your palm here and squeeze, and that's when the filling's gonna come out. So you just stick the tip into your date and squeeze out the filling Fancy. until you see it come out the edge. If you all have ever gotten Peppa Goat Bites or blue cheese olives from us, this is how we do it. We use a piping bag, and Sarah teaches us. The proper the hand, proper technique. hand technique and then we all are ignore like her and do and crazy like, things yes yeah. bonkers yeah and then one time alex morgan of soccer fame came into the <laughs> shop and she wanted blue cheese olives and of course i'm like anything for you alex and i was trying to pipe her the blue cheese and olives and my hand was like, like ah! <laughs> and sarah was like let me help you with that so you know that's what friends and co-workers and bosses are for okay so i have enough dates for there to be five per person so I piped five, and if you're not down for the piping bag, what you could do is, I'm gonna start with the speck part, and I'll show you what to do next. So we have some speck in here. This is a smoked prosciutto. Think of it like bacon, but the way it's better than bacon yeah. for this purpose is it doesn't need to be cooked. It's cured, so it's ready to eat the way it is. It's just gonna get crispy and delicious as it bakes. But you know how when you wrap things in bacon and you're just waiting for the bacon to get cooked? Yeah, it's really you stressful. You don't have to worry about this. Yeah. 
you know, bacon wrapped steak. You know how hard it is to cook a bacon wrapped steak so oh that everything's God. done at the right time? No. It's terrible. Never attempted that. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> one piece of speck we're going to cut in half, and you'll use one half a piece for one date. So if you are using one of your piped dates, you're just going to take it and roll it in the speck. So you've got this little piece here. If you want to, you can seal it with a toothpick, um, but I don't I almost feel like you don't need to. I'm just going to put it seam side down. And we should have no problem. So problems. we see what happens? Yeah. Then, if you didn't want to use the piping bag, I've got my half a piece of the speck here. I'm going to take maybe a teaspoon-ish of the filling, put it on the end here, take my date right down on the filling, mm. and then just roll. Now, are you worried the cheese is going to ooze out in this? this way? I wasn't until you said. <laughs> no, not really. I mean, it may ooze out the side a little bit, but like I said, the speck doesn't need to cook. You're just right, waiting until right, right. this gets kind of crispy and delicious, and totally. then it'll be good to eat. Do you want to try one? Yeah, what do you mean? You oh, make it? Up? Sure, yeah, I can help roll. I can do things okay, here. that aren't alcohol related. Cut that in half. <laughs> Am I a sous chef? Is this like a technical, can yeah. that be on my resume? Can I put it on my resume? No. <laughs> if anybody has any questions along the way, please let us know. We are here to answer them while we finish rolling. <laughs> Very important. Ooh, I can smell the speck. Sorry, the speck. Is that how you say it, Gina? Speck? speck. That's speck. how Gina says it. Okay, so well that's then that's how you say it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's why she's here. <laughs> for pronunciation. Otherwise, forget. Otherwise, we don't need her. <laughs> she knows about the speck. Okay, I think that's probably good. Yeah. We'll finish these later. Oh, uh, we'll eat them. Yeah, I know you will. I'm just holding it up so nicely. Okay, I'm gonna pop these in the oven. I have a sheet tray here. I'm with parchment paper. I'm gonna pop them in the oven. Again, my oven's at 425 just because I want things to move a little bit quicker. I'm also using a toaster oven, so things will get done faster as well. If you have a toaster oven, I love using them because they're so tiny and quick and easy. Um, but if you're in a regular oven, also no problem. Um, I chose both of these appetizers because I thought they would be great Hot, but also mm -hmm. room temperature. So these are things you don't have to worry about keeping hot for your guests. So you can just enjoy your evening and not be cooking all night. Yeah, because I that is really stressful because you're like trying to time it, right? Like yes. you want to like put them right in the oven before guests arrive, but then everyone's arriving. What if you forget it? Mm -hmm. I'm already stressed, and it's just the two of us, and everything's fine. Yes, everything's gonna be fine. Yes. Okay. <laughs> How long are we cooking them for? Um, let's say let's start with like seven minutes where that goes. Can you, is it going to take longer than seven minutes to make a cocktail? Um, hopefully not. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I do have some fun facts per usual, though, Okay. so who knows. Okay. Well, let's see. Well, now you're allowed to enjoy yours. Yeah. Isn't this so cute? Look at this little cup. It has bows on it. Yeah, shout out to my roommate Jo. These are her cups, holiday themed, obviously. Um, we only use vintage glassware on this show. Of that's course. What I, that's what I said. <laughs> What's our show called? Vintage glassware. Vintage that's glassware. the name of our cocktail <laughs> show. So, um, what I said on here for the fall pimps cup that we're gonna be making first was a Collins glass. So that's technically like a thin, taller glass. Um, you can use any glass that you want. These are like almost kind of too small based on the amount of garnishes I decided to put in them. But you know, something this size, something a little bigger will work. Um, so we're making a fall pimps cup. What is pimps, Rachel? Great question, I have no idea. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, so PIMS is something I discovered several years ago. It's a British phenomenon. If you've ever been to Wimbledon, which I have not, um, they serve PIMS cups there. That's like their signature drink. Apparently that and champagne. So I will be attending next year. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so PIMS is, again, a British um, liqueur. Um, it is actually a gin-based liquor because apparently that's all we drink here. Sorry. <laughs> it doesn't taste like gin though, um, but it's got spices in it and obviously a little bit of caramel coloring because, you know, it's a little dark. So it's just um, the coloring in there. Yeah, okay. the coloring, um, but there are some spices and a citrus element as well. It's not listed what like herbs and things that they put in it. Um, but the reason we wanted to do a fall pins cup is first of all, it's fun, it's unique. Not a lot of people have had pins cups, um, so that's fun to explain. But also pins is pretty low in alcohol. It's like 
what is it, 25%. Uh, so um, like a regular gin is gonna be more like 45. Okay. Um, so it's just, you know, not that. So basically we chose two cocktails. One's pretty low in alcohol and one is only alcohol. So <laughs> just to give you two different options, some people like a more spritzy drink, you know, but you kind of feel like that's summery. So we wanted to do a kind of a winter version of a spritz, which is this Pimm's Cup. So traditionally Pimm's Cups are made actually in the summer. Um, and you put cucumber and you put mint and all these things for garnishes, but we're turning it into a fall or a winter pimps cup, which they do as well. Um, you could even serve this hot, but like that stresses me out. Again, like it needs to be hot when you serve it. I'm like, we don't have time for that if people are coming over. No. Yeah. Um, another reason we picked this was because it's super easy to batch. So we only gave you ingredients enough for two, but this is so easy um, to make ahead of time. And then I can tell you what you want to wait and do right at the very end. Mm -hmm. Um, so basically we have our PIMS, which I'm going to use this, I'm going to put this aside. Didn't you just batch a ton of PIMS recently? I did, <laughs> I did. So it was our friend's birthday and he is British and he requested a full, a full English full breakfast. Full English breakfast at our tailgate. <laughs> so and we, we had PIMS cups. <laughs> so we tailgated the women's soccer team, San Diego Wave, they're in the playoffs, woo woo. Um, and yeah, so we wanted to have a drink to go with it, so we were like, Let's do pins. Yeah, so, so that's yeah. how easy it is to batch, is that you can take like a big old bucket of it. Exactly, to I did. I literally <laughs> had a bucket huge. with a little spout and brought it. So the thing about batching is you wanna batch everything that's not bubbly. So you can batch everything that's not bubbly days ahead of time and it's gonna be completely fine. Um, you just don't wanna add the bubbles until later. Yeah. That's gonna be like your last ingredient. The other thing about pims is it's nice when the fruit actually like the garnishes sit in it for a little bit so i would even recommend making this like a couple hours ahead of time or the day before let the fruit kind of sit in there um which is nice and oh i forgot to say traditionally so traditionally a pims cup is pims cucumber mint orange and lemonade um special british lemonade though oh. it's like that clear lemonade we used to have it it's also french oh, but they probably yeah. don't want to we don't need to i think it was yeah. irish the one we used to get irish yeah wow crazy um so it's usually lemonade but because we're doing our fall one we are using apple cider um so you have your pimps you have your apple cider and basically we're just going to split them between the glasses um what i am going to do first is actually the garnishes just because you kind of have to like stick them in the cup here you're going to cut it do you want to cut me some oranges sure. and some apples how and show like us that? how to cut them i don't know i kind of like the round wheel what do you think yeah me too okay right. um orange she just started cutting from the top and for the demo one so now we're just gonna cut it up. Oh, see, mine was like real thick. Yours is kind of thin. Well, it's kind of lopsided. It's kind of lopsided. <laughs> you know, I'm like sideways and not cutting straight and I'm sitting, so. <laughs> so true. <laughs> Even though earlier you were like, it's no problem, I can cook while sitting. I can, I didn't say I could cook well. <laughs> So if you're batching these, you can cut up a bunch of fruit, throw it in the pitcher. Um, if you're doing just like individual glasses like we're doing now, let me move this out of the way. Um, you can just put them in the glasses. Um, the other fun thing about this is you can, um, if you're batching, put them all in the pitcher. I'm sorry, see this is way more than seven minutes. No, you're doing great, I'm okay. watching. Okay, great. Um, is you can um, put everything in a pitcher, put all your fruit in, and then have extra fruit on the side so people can add what fruit they like. I think that's really fun. Like a little garnish yeah, bar. Yeah, a garnish bar. And yeah. we're gonna talk about that for our martini too, because we're obsessed with a garnish bar. Yes. Not that I've ever had one, but no, no, I'm gonna In theory. Them. In theory. So we're gonna put the oranges in. We're gonna do, we're gonna do an apple like that, I think. Yes. Yeah. Do you want me to show them how to cut it right now? Um, no, let's wait till the end. Oh, surprise minute. <laughs> Great. Um, we also chose for our garnish here, you just have like a little garnish bag. These are for um, both of the cocktails. So for this one, we're gonna do the cranberries and the cinnamon, and we're gonna save the rosemary, but the rosemary would be great in it too. So honestly, yeah. do whatever you want. So we're gonna put cranberries in these. These are just fresh cranberries. Um, you could even get like really fancy and roll them in sugar, right? Isn't that a thing? Do you have to roll them in egg first or something crazy? Um, you get egg white. Egg, egg white. white, because then it dries, because if you've ever like, you know, mixed up an egg in a bowl and then left it in the sink, it's like concrete. Like egg, it gets real mm -hmm. sticky. Um, so you take egg white, roll it around in these, and then you, even like whipped egg white is better because it gets fluffier, and then roll it in sugar, let it dry, and then it'll be stuck on there. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. But yeah. also tell your guests if they have an egg allergy. Yes, we, I've heard some stories. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so maybe just the plain cranberries. All right, so we're gonna take our pims, we're just gonna do half in each cup, in your pins cup. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So I was doing some research into PIMS, and it turns out, so this is called PIMS number one cup. They actually make PIMS one through six, although some have been discontinued. And they're all um, different based on the liquor that they're based on. So this one's gin. They have a brandy one, number two. That's a number two cup um, that they just re-released. And then they have a number six, which is vodka based. I've never seen the number two or the number six in the States, but let me know if you have, because I'd be what very about interested. Three, four, and five? Exactly. There are some other things that have been discontinued. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sad. Very sad. Um, the other fun thing is the guy who started PIMS owned an oyster bar, and we're obsessed with oysters. So yes. Just, yeah. just to be noted. Okay, so PIMS is in there. We're going to do apple cider. This is apple cider from Julian. So good. We got it from Specialty Shake Produce. It. Yeah, definitely. Shake it off. <laughs> Taylor Swift break. All right, so we're going to do half apple cider in each. So this is, um, we're going to do two ounces per drink. These little mini bottles are about four ounces. So, but again, you can put more or less according to your taste. But the apple cider is really quite good. All right, now at this point, I'm going to put ice in. So if you were batching, what I would do is put all the fruit in the pitcher, all the pins, all the apple cider, no ice, put it in the fridge, leave it. When you're ready to serve is when I would add ice and then add your ginger beer. So I wouldn't even do. necessarily add ice to the cocktail; just add ice to the glass oh, that you're yeah, then sure. gonna fill with the pin stuff. That's true because if you already have had it in the fridge, it's already cold enough. You yeah. can just put ice off to the side. I'm yeah. just using my hands because we're all friends here, right, Gina? Oh yeah. Okay, great. I wash them. It's fine. All right. At some point. <laughs> at some point. At some point they're this washed. Week. Um, and then just because we're mixing them in the cup, I'm just gonna. This was too much ice, Sarah. I didn't put that. Ice. <laughs> How dare you? Like I said, these cups are a little small, but we're gonna make. But it work. they're cute. Yeah. And then we're gonna top with ginger beer. And like I said, um, I, I forget what I put on the um, thing. Half a can. Hi. Um, I meant half of these 7.5 ounces. Some of you got a little um, more bonus ginger beer, so about four ounces, I'd say. But again, I'm just going to top it off here a little bit. Maybe do a little swoosh, swoosh. There we go. All right, we're going to do our cinnamon stick. And then you want to do the apple? Oh, yes. So here's the apple, right? We start cutting it from the bottom because when you cut it this way, like a cross section, got through the seed. Um, you get the cute little flower Ooh. of the seed. So then you're just going to cut a little slit up to where the flower is, just right here. And then it goes right on your drink. So if you're batching, you can do all of this. Maybe put a little bit of lemon juice or something or put yes. it in like honey water. What's the... Um, yeah, you could do like a lemon water. And if you want to have it just like out. sit yeah. in water. You can um, squeeze lemon right all over them, but then it, they start to taste lemony. Yeah. So if you put lemon in water and have them soaking in the water until you're ready to use them, they'll stay nice. Yeah, and what I think is really fun is you can actually like garnish these without any liquid in it for your guests and put them all out. Like you can have the apple yeah. on there and everything and then maybe leave the cinnamon stick aside for people to put in, but then they can just pour their drink in there and they don't have to like worry about trying to figure out how you're gonna do this. Yeah. So, all right, Gina, this is yours. Oh. I'm gonna hand this to you. So cute. All right. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Ball oh, cheers. cheers. <laughs> the cinnamon smells Ooh. so good. Mm, delightful. Stephanie accidentally put the rosemary in there and loves it. Right? See? Okay. I think we should mm -hmm. do that. Because mm -hmm. I put, so I actually gave everyone four sprigs of rosemary because I was thinking we might want to experiment. So you can save two for your martinis and then... Oh, here, sorry. I think we were really debating which cocktail we, we were, were. going to put the And then it's like, why don't we just put them in both? I know, we didn't want to be repetitive, but do whatever you want. Yeah, no, good call. I think it oh, I think it's cuter at least. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Very festive. It's all festive. about cute. Oh, and here's our appetizer. It's coming out. Get your stuff out of my way. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Get your orange out of here. I need them to see it. Ready? I can hear them sizzling, and I'm watching. Good, because I'm not the big Ooh. reveal. Ooh. Can you see how toasty they look? They look so good. It smells like bacon, huh? Yeah, it does. <laughs> Delicious. Oh, okay, God. so the one that had the cheese wrapped on the outside rather than piped in, it oozed out just a little bit just more, a little but bit. I wouldn't say that I would change anything mm -hmm. about um, their hot. But, here. I think I'm gonna wait a minute before I put that in my mouth. <laughs> but thank you. I wanted to cut it and see if it um, like To be it. honest, I feel like the toothpicks might give it like a nice look if you're putting it on a little plate. That's true. You could bake it with the toothpick 
or, or put it in put afterwards it in or after. something. I mean, it's you not know, necessary. But. Because also people may not want to pick up something that's so greasy mm, and spill it point. on their holiday attire. <laughs> Stephanie skipped the piping bag and toothpicks. Worked like a charm. Nice. Sweet. Okay, right. awesome. Good to know. So you can see the filling inside. Oh, oh, oh you yeah. went for it. Uh-uh. Too hot? Uh-huh. Shouldn't have done it. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> see, here we are. Get your water. Spit it out on TV. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I did want to mention that the, this fall pimps cup is really great for people who don't drink. Also, you can easily turn this into a mocktail without the pimps. So that's something fun. Oh god, she's dying. Mm -hmm. It tastes good though. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. You get the sweetness from the date, mm -hmm. the creaminess from the. <laughs> this is a Food Network show mm -hmm. from the mid crema. Mm -hmm. Can you yes. taste the smokiness? No, oh, for sure. Yeah, it definitely just tastes like bacon. I wouldn't even call it speck. It's bacon. That's awesome. Now, Let's if you want to bacon dinner. wrap anything, wrap it in speck. Because you don't have to worry about it cooking. We forgot plates. Yeah, and we did. We were really just... Here, Gina. <gasps> Thank you. <laughs> Not planning well. Oh, God. You get, like, the sweet, mm. salty of the nuts, too, in there, the pecans. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's hot. Uh -huh. I told you. Oh, it's so good. Mm -hmm. And this will be so good room temperature. That's a big thing, too. And they're so delicious mm -hmm. and um, we'll wait till they cool to room temperature and have one up for dessert and just to ooh, make yes. sure good you know fall. what i mean good the spec really is amazing because it is really nice when the bacon gets crispy but it's so hard to do that and this immediately got crispy like mm -hmm. you don't need to worry about it and like you said like well i guess you can technically eat raw bacon it's just not it's yummy pure. no no you it's know, not it's i'm just, just not saying <laughs> <laughs> it's like, not, not gonna tasty. hurt you and this doesn't really give off any fat I mean, maybe a little bit but not like bacon no splatter no popping nothing so yeah um oh, and it, it total win and oh, it, it's hard to, oh my god it's sorry, amazing it try it yeah. with the yeah it's a sweet salty situation i think it's nice i'm gonna burn myself again yeah okay just wait um, the cool thing about the charcuterie that we carry too is we will um, cut as many slices as you want or as few. So some people will come in and be like, you know, if you only need five slices of speck, you don't have to pay for a quarter pound. We'll just nope. cut five. Or like you whatever want thicker you want. or thinner. Or it's true. Yeah. yeah, some people like to buy like a big hunk of speck and then chop it up kind of like a pancetta situation. So mm -hmm. you can absolutely do that. I like the rosemary. Even yeah. just the scent. You yeah, really totally. Um, that's what we're going for in the martini too, like just the scent. So thank you, Stephanie. Right? Appreciate she that. She's in the class. She knows. Yeah, she's, she's gonna be our guest class. next time. <laughs> guest star. Okay, we're ready for second appetizer. Let's do it. We're on track. Good time. Good. Okay. See, so, yeah, I could even start. put a little more ginger beer on top. You know. You like, could. I'm not sure if anyone followed my directions and said that the garlic needed to be minced, but I didn't do that yet. <laughs> but you didn't follow your own directions? No, I was busy working. <laughs> okay, so do you use a zester for garlic? Sometimes, but it's a real bummer. What's a real bummer? Oh, a zester. No, I don't, but the chefs do on TikTok that I see. So what it you, should be, right? What do you do? I thought you meant a garlic press. Oh, I hate yeah, those. No, no. Yeah. Those are you know what nice. I've been doing? Tell me if this is wrong, chef. I've been crushing the garlic and then chopping it. Yeah, that's fine. I just, okay. I don't like <laughs> oh no, only because I don't want to chop it. I just want to zest it. I just like so that's great. Yes. <laughs> it's so wonderful that you do it that way. <laughs> Wait, so it's positive support. No, I just garlic gets so sticky and when you're it, chopping yeah. a lot of garlic it's so sticky on your hands and on your knife and on your cutting board and then your cutting board smells like garlic. I basically just give up and it's not even really minced. So yes. I should follow what you're exactly. doing, which is just to zest it. But if you ever need a cool trick to peel your piece of garlic you can hold it and then kind of like twist opposite ways. Ooh. You can hear it cracking and then it loosens the peel and it comes right off. Wow. Yeah. That's very exciting. Trick. If you don't have one of those like squid things, have you seen those? It's like a rubber tube and you put the garlic in and you like roll it on the counter and it gets the garlic peel off. No, that's exciting. Yeah. It only works sometimes. I have my melted butter and I'm just going to use, this is a micro plane or a zester. This is my favorite tool for garlic and ginger and parmesan and all kinds of things. You just zest it till you get to the end piece here. My problem is it like doesn't come out of the other side, but you can just grab it later, right? Well, you just bang it. Oh, that's what the chefs do. Got it, <laughs> got it. Lots of banging in the kitchen. Yes. You have to make as much noise as possible. <laughs> do you need another spoon or are you gonna use that one? 
I could use another spoon. Okay. I did not think this through. Yes, yeah, chef. Thank you. <laughs> um, I have my parsley and more rosemary. We're kind of mimicking the flavors of the cocktail in the flavors of the butter. I'm probably going to use like half the rosemary, but um, if you really like rosemary, go ahead and use it all. I'm just going to fine chop this here. I am this table. I know. I'm, I'll hold it. It's okay. We'll have some rough chopper. So I'll just like move more slowly. <laughs> here we go. Into the butter. Hopefully your butter is melted. Mine, I melted like half an hour ago, and then now it's been sitting out, so it's a little bit chilled again. So it's kind of thick, which I think will be nice for brushing mm. on the pastry. Oh so I don't, I don't mind That's it. It's so good. Is that garlic herb butter? We're gonna set this aside. Um, I need to dip everything that you make. I need to dip a chip in it. The garlic's raw, yeah. so maybe kind of spicy. Mm. Spicy? <laughs> I might be the vampire later, so. <laughs> Okay, so here's our tray. You're gonna get your puff pastry. Everyone has two sheets of puff pastry. Each sheet is gonna make two pastries. So how many are we making total? Four? Four. Nice. I'm gonna show you a really cool way to use the puff pastry so that you get um, some puff action without having to be wasteful which I choose to do sometimes. So, what we're aiming to do is kind of create a bowl or like a, you know, some edges around our pastry so that the cheese and the tomato stay inside. The way you could do that is you take two cookie cutters. So one, one size, one a little bit smaller. You cut the bigger one, you cut another bigger one and cut the smaller one out and then like the donut piece goes over the top. Oh, okay, yeah. You know, so you've got a flat piece and then you've got another like donut piece on top. Since that donut layer on the outside mm -hmm. is double layer, it'll grow thicker than the inside, but then you have like that center piece You're that you've cut out that's yeah, like kind yeah. of wasteful. So I'm gonna show you a cool way to avoid that. Um, I'm gonna first cut one of my pieces in half. Now, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna cut this. You are going to <laughs> wave your neck around. <laughs> I'm gonna cut it first and then show you what I did. Cause I cannot think and cut <laughs> at the same time. Oh. Okay, so I cut, you leave two corners not fully cut. So the ones diagonal from each other. I started about here, cut all the way to the corner, not all the way to the corner, but cut all the way here and then one line kept going. Then I picked up my knife, went over to this side and then one line like this. So you ended up with these pieces that look like this. Nice. But see they're connected on these two edges. Does that make sense? I think so. Please pause the video and rewatch <laughs> as needed, okay? I'll show you on the next ones too. And we'll be giving out Sarah's cell phone number if there <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's see. I'll just see if I can do this. This Here, is fancy. Do you want to hold it? So, starting at the very corner, coming I'm, down, I'm not going the whole way. Going to that same corner, going down this way, not going the whole way. Then this one connected to here, and not going the whole way. All right. So then, from here, I have a pastry brush. We've learned before, if you don't have a pastry brush, taking a little like crumple of paper towel also works. Nice. So take a little bit of the garlic butter and I'm gonna brush the inner rectangle, square, rectangle, whatever shape it is. It's a rectangle. <laughs> this is also um, easy to do with square or like I said, rectangle. Doesn't matter what shape. Not circle though. <laughs> Diamond? Yes. It is if you turn it. So then, you're gonna take your open piece here and you're gonna fold it onto this corner and match what? up these pieces. I know you've never seen this. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Then you take this one and fold it to the what? other side. Just kind of let it flop down. Let's see. So you end up with this little shape here 
where you've got little foldy bits on the end and then you've got your second layer here that are going to puff up taller and create this little like boat in the center of your pastry. Yeah, people are going to think you're so fancy when you do this. It like works a little bit easier if you do it with a square piece of pastry. Oh really? I just, yeah, I mean things fold nicer. Oh, but I like, see. I just had to stretch the pastry a little bit in order to fit it it's as a rectangle. Yeah, I just didn't want to be wasteful because the puff pastry came in a rectangle. <laughs> if you're seeing you have any cracking happening in your pastry, just roll it out with a rolling pin. Or if you don't or have a wine bottle. I was just <laughs> sorry, <say>. sorry. <laughs> yes, my jokes. Oh, oh god. <laughs> if you don't have a rolling pin, a wine bottle works well also. I'm just gonna do my two others. It's gonna have to be a Bordeaux bottle though. I feel like these like it has to be a bottle. flat bottle. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. Could Not one of wonky. the fancy ones. Or a Pim's cup bottle. A Pim's bottle. Yeah. Anything cylindrical. Okay. More butter. I guess you can put the butter on all parts of the pastry, not just the middle part. Because I want to go back and get these edges too. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, whatever's easiest. Maybe maybe it's easier to like fold it when it's not all. Not all gooey. Gooey. You're right. Okay. Center square. Now you do the edges while I fold. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Sous chef. You trust me? So corner, up and over to the other side. Scoosh it all around. Scoosh it. Very technical culinary term. Scoosh it. <laughs> and while everybody's working there loving the, the chips in the butter dip. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <See>? <laughs> I love a raw garlic. Like, so do I. I. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. so do I. <laughs> but now you know. Gina, little, here, you need to try. Wait, let me, let me do the edges do here, the edges and then here. we're going to get Gina a taste. I'm going to open my Grayson next. This is a wonderful cheese. They didn't call it a Telegio style, but that's what I want to call it. Because, so it is. So it is. <laughs> it's from Meadow Creek Dairy in Virginia. It's a very small cheese maker that um, we could get this cheese a few years ago and then like COVID happened, so they kind of dropped off the map and then one of our favorite distributors, Gourmet Imports, just picked them up again so we can finally get this cheese again. It is wash rind, so which means literally they take the wheel of cheese, wash it in a liquid of mm -hmm. some sort. They didn't name the liquid, so I'm assuming a brine, just a saltwater brine. It adds flavor and then it also makes this funny orange rind grow this orange mold grow on the rind mm -hmm. but it's a little bit funky it's definitely creamy and it's going to mellow in the pastry don't worry and i'm just going to cut this into four equal pieces so you got a little piece like this i'm going to place it in the center of my pastry oh my god this is so cute guys i haven't seen this i know you haven't had it yet yeah huh? so i exciting. served this at a pop-up dinner once with real sledge I like this one. It's like beefy, meaty flavor, a little less stinky. Then, God, just before she does the tomatoes, I just have to say, Sarah literally does pop-up dinners here with like two toaster ovens in the back and some Bunsen burners. Like, it's <laughs> insane. It's like the highest quality food I've ever had. We do wine pairings with every course. Um, it's what, like a minimum of 10 people? 12. 12 people, 12, so sorry. Um, I just had to throw that out there. It's incredible to watch. And one of the people who always do the pop-up dinner with us, who we love, she always has everyone come toward the kitchen. Because she wants them to see that I don't have a kitchen. That Sarah's literally <laughs> back there with a toaster <laughs> oven, and she's got, like, a torch, and she's like, They I think no they're going to see, like, this really cool kitchen, yeah. and they come around the corner, <laughs> and they're, and they're like, like, what? <laughs> what is this? And, of course, someone last time was like, well, how much better of a dinner could you create <laughs> with a real kitchen? And I was like, none. This just, I just have to, like, be really on top of it here. Like, i got to be really on my time management, and, like, I can do just fine. <laughs> But we have a dinner on Friday. That's why I'm like, my brain's in dinner mode. I had to throw it out there. Sorry, Thank I you. think it's so Thank great. You if you want to book one, just email <laughs> exactly. me. Exactly. <laughs> then you're going to take one of our roasted tomatoes. Also, like, get a little of that oil, yeah. too. And let that drip on your pastry. So these are the uh, roasted red tomatoes that we sell here in the shop. We use them on our sandwiches. Mm -hmm. We use them on our burrata tray. They're delicious. You could use fresh tomatoes here as well. But I just think might as well start out with something, like, extra roasty and delicious like these tomatoes we also love it on the sarah introduced me to like a baguette and then a little bit of the truffle mousse pate that we sell i don't even like pate but it turns out they do um and then the roasted tomato on top is like the best snack it is 
Okay, let's see if I can fit all four of these on my Ooh, shoe geometry. Tray. They do puff up, so you just have to be careful. But I would say if they touch when they bake, they do come apart pretty easily. So like, this is how close I'm getting mine. I think it'll be fine. <laughs> now we're gonna pop these in the oven. Ooh, ta-da. What are we, what are, what's our temperature? Um, mine's still at 425. Puff pastry needs a little bit higher temperature. I think okay. 400, 425 is good. I just wanted things to get done a little bit quicker. Totally. But 400's just fine if that's where you're at. Or 425 if you like living on the edge. You really <laughs> gotta watch it though. I'm like sitting here watching the oven, so it makes it easier. <laughs> and while you're watching the oven, you can make your cocktails. <laughs> yes! While you're watching the oven, make your cocktails. So how much time do you think? Like 10 minutes? I mean, I know you have to watch it, but I'm just curious. Take as long as you need. I don't know. Oh, okay. We'll start with 10. Okay. I was curious. Start with 10. Okay. okay. Second cocktail time. This one was requested. By me. By Sarah. Um, we have called it the Rachel because it, it's basically my version of a martini. So. It's the only martini I've ever <laughs> liked. Ever. So we were at one point doing like themed movie nights because why not? So I made them all watch like an old timey James Bond and nobody paid attention and everybody hated it except for me. I was like, ooh, ooh, you know, because I love James Bond. But anyway, so obviously I had to make a martini, but instead of making his martini, which is like shaken and it's vodka and it's nonsense, um, in my <laughs> opinion, so sorry, Mr. Bond, um, I made these martinis and Sarah was like, wait, I like this though. And I was like, yeah. Yeah. Because it's made with gin. Yeah. <laughs> so the traditional martini is made with gin. There's really nothing wrong with vodka. I was just being silly. Um, but so when you order a martini, usually in restaurants, people are going to ask you now because they just want to be like super sure they know what you're talking about. But technically, if you order a martini, it's going to be a gin martini. Sarah likes to bug me and ask me if I want a gin martini, which just makes me angry because it's redundant. Well, martini martini is, gin. is gin. And if you want a vodka martini, you ask for a vodka martini. Mm -hmm. And I actually just learned today some fascinating information that <laughs> a vodka martini used to be called a kangaroo kicker. Um, a kangaroo <laughs> kicker? Yeah, you I told you kangaroo. kangaroo. I learned more about it. Oh, okay. So it turns out that in the 1940s, um, gin was becoming hard to get because of the World War, like shipping it. They made it in London. There were supplies were limited. They started making more vodka martinis. And at the point at which they started really serving it at one of like the super fancy bars in New York, um, the Australians had just joined the war on our side. Mm -hmm. So in honor of the Australians joining the war, they started calling this the kangaroo kicker. So people would come in and order it and it's a vodka martini, oh which God. I love. I don't believe that people call it that anymore and perhaps it's inappropriate, I'm not sure. <laughs> now that I know the Australian so connection, I wouldn't. Account. But um, just, just a fun historical fact. Um, so yeah, so this is a martini, so it's gonna be super boozy. That's just up front. So um, it's kind of fun sometimes when you're hosting parties to give guests options. So this one's nice, lower in alcohol. You can make it a mocktail for those who aren't drinking. Juicy, more like a spritz. Um, this other one is going to be more bold, more al alcoholic. You're gonna serve it without any ice in it, which can be also very fun. And you can use very nice other festive vintage glassware. How cute are these? So these are my favorite little cups to serve martinis in. Um, it's ideal if they've been in the freezer, but we didn't, we, we skipped that step. I've seen people now, they'll, if they're doing like a video, um, they'll put ice water, like a yes, ton of totally. ice and water, and then just chuck it. Yeah, they, and they do that at good bars too. You'll see even just ice, they'll just, they'll grab, the first thing they do before they even make the drink is just grab it and put some ice in it and just let it sit. So we can do that. Top notch. Yeah. Um, so you wouldn't think a martini could be batched, but it, it can be, turns out, because I started taking it camping, and it's my new favorite thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> I do. So a picture I, of martini I'm camping. camping. It's a bougie camping. <laughs> and then I bring my mason jar and a spoon, and then I get ice from the, from the cooler, and I put it in, and then I pour a little martini, in, and then I stir it. And then I strain it with the top of the mason jar oh, into my little camping glass, because innovation. here we are. Uh, yeah. So this can be totally batched. You don't need to avoid any ingredients. There's nothing sparkling. You can put it all in a uh, container and you can just store it in your freezer also. If you're just like, you know what I need for the holiday season? A batch of martinis. They call those freezer door yeah, cocktails. Have exactly. you heard of that? Like a whole bottle, but 
the cocktail full yeah. and you keep it in your freezer door and it's ready. Because it's mostly alcohol, it's not going to freeze. And right. then it's ice cold. So you probably at that point don't even need to stir it. I haven't tried it, yeah. but well, it's like probably so cold. Back. But I like it like really ice cold like that. It's very, it's very important. Um, okay, so the thing about a martini is it should be, unlike James Bond's, my, my hero, um, it should be stirred, not shaken. And that is because um, it's important to get some dilution in cocktails, but you don't want to over dilute certain cocktails. Um, this being one of them. So the booze forward cocktails, you don't want to shake because when you shake, you get more water into the cocktail. Some cocktails you want more water in, like a margarita. So a margarita you're gonna shake, you're not gonna stir it because if you if you stir it, you're barely gonna get any water and then when you drink it, it's just gonna be, it's not gonna be right. Like the ingredients won't have meld, like it, it won't be the flavor you're looking for. So um, usually the rule of thumb is when you're putting fruit juice in a cocktail, you're gonna shake it. Oh. And when you're not, you're gonna stir it. Now, I'm breaking the rule because, you know, this is the Rachel and I do what I want. Um, <laughs> this has some fruit juice in it. It has some roses, sweetened lime juice. So technically, I think it should be shaken. But you know what? It, I just like to stir it. I think it's, I think it's classic. This is your cocktail. OK, great. You do whatever you want. So <laughs> these are some really fun ingredients. So we start out with gin. And again, you could make this a vodka martini if you wanted to. You can use Why really any you? spirit. I don't know. I mean, we have, we're, we're obsessed with gin over here. Um, but I do have to say that you and yours vodka is quite good. Oh, yeah. They distill it from grapes, so I feel like it has, I don't know, a quality that I like better. Oh, but. So is it technically a wine product? I don't know. It's a good question. You, I've heard of those, like, liqueurs yeah. that are made from grapes could technically go under the wine license. Yeah. I don't know. I'll have to ask them. Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty sure they, well, I don't know. Because they make gin, but they make it from their vodka. So gin is just vodka with uh, juniper berries and other flavorings in it. <laughs> I did not yeah, they know just that. start. So vodka is just like pure, not pure, not like ethanol, but like pure alcohol, like what you get when you distill it. That's vodka. Wow. You don't add anything into it. And then to get gin, you add juniper berries, you add, you can add like dried lemon peel, like all sorts of botanicals, and that's what makes it gin. Yeah. I know. So I do like vodka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Shoot. It's juniper berries. It's juniper berries. <laughs> like juniper flavored vodka only. Can I have a juniper flavored vodka martini, please? Oh, wow, I did not know that. Okay. Um, so the gin we're using is Bombay Sapphire. Um, I'm obsessed with the you and yours London Dry Gin, so if you can get that, I would recommend it. But with martinis, um, you want to get a London Dry style. You don't want to get, like, I'm obsessed with Hendrix, but I use Hendrix in my gin and tonics or gimlets even. Um, but you don't want that super, like, cucumbery flavor. It's just kind of going to taste weird. Okay. That's what I've learned. I've done lots of research. Okay. She's made plenty. <laughs> so I'm going to make two martinis right now. So I'm going to put all of this in the uh, stirring glass. So I'm going to put this all in before I put the ice because I don't want it to get over diluted. So I'm going to put the gin in. I usually use one and a half ounces per cup. You can use up to two. You will, you know, experiment with your ratios and see. All right. Second ingredient is the dry vermouth. I highly recommend Dolan. I tried it with a different vermouth and was like, Poof, what is this? Like, it's all like so bougie, but I could taste it. I really could. I think spending like a couple more dollars on a really nice vermouth, so Dolan or like a small batch is so much better like the, than the Carpano or any of the other kind of weird, although Carpano makes a good sweet vermouth, whatever, it's fine. Okay, so well, we're gonna put- so little. Yeah, it's know? true. And then just make sure you keep your vermouth in the fridge because it definitely is like a fortified wine sort of situation. So you should be keeping it in the fridge. So again, I'm making two, so I'm gonna pour all of it in, but I just use a half an ounce per drink. And I love vermouth. Really? Yeah, I love the flavor. Yeah. yeah. So here we are. Okay, now this third ingredient is super special. It's called Macrute Lime Vermouth and it's made from mom and pop. So it's mom and pop. M-O-M-M-E-N-P-O-P, -M -M -E one word. And they make super special vermouths. We have a ruby grapefruit one at home. I know they have it at the Bottle Craft in North Park because they paired it for that Amaro vermouth oh. class. Yeah, Jean paired it with um, a cheese with Mary Grace. So that was awesome. Um, but I just find this gives a little more vermouth flavor, but it's got a really nice citrus situation. You want to smell it? Mm, it really does smell. And look at this color. I mean, it almost me? smells like... It gives me like cucumber melon. Like, it maybe kind of it's does. It's green and it's like throwing me off. Even it, after I was like, don't use Hendrix, it's cucumber. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're right. You're right. It has a different, it has a very nice citrus. Yes. 
And again, this this martini is very citrus forward. So it is, are you keeping an eye? We're doing okay? Yeah. Of course you are. Sorry, I got I panicked. <laughs> I <get> salad. <laughs> I was like, it's something. Me too. And I was like. <laughs> so this martini is super citrus forward. You can make a more dirty martini with olives. That's always fun for the holiday. This is just, we thought the citrusy with the rosemary and then the super savory of the puff pastry with a little sweetness would be good. Yeah. So I, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm obsessed with roses. I know it's like it's so ridiculous it comes in a plastic bottle it's sweet and lime juice you're probably like why can't you just make your own lime juice and simple syrup you know what I could but I don't want to <laughs> but that's what it is it's lime juice and simple syrup but so it has like a roses, different flavor yeah like a more processed it's like, it's like making your own grenadine like it's if you true. want the real stuff it's also in the plastic bottle it's true because then you gotta like mess with your ratios and like yes. how much simple syrup and like we don't have time for this nope. frankly we need a martini now so I yeah. use roses. <laughs> I use roses um, to give it a little sweetness because martinis can be very aggressive, and yeah. a lot of people don't like it. That's why I find this is a very crowd pleaser martini, if you're gonna do it. So roses in there. Again, um, the macrut lime vermouth and the roses. You're using a quarter ounce per drink. It's just like a little splash, so it's perfect. Great. Um, all right. So we have everything in here. This is when we're gonna add our ice. God, I wish I was like that TikTok guy who had the big chunks of ice that he, he like, like has a, yeah. a, a kick, he like carves like it out. Yeah. Kick. We're just gonna put like a ton of ice in. <laughs> All right, a ton of ice. Do we want to dump this ice? We're gonna dump that ice. Thank you. Ooh, they're very cold. Ha ha. All right, we're gonna take our stirring spoon. Uh, my roommate Morgan says that a chopstick also works, which is true, <laughs> or any spoon. But I like this. What you're gonna do is you're gonna put like the kind of beveled edge up against the edge and try to stay there. So you're not supposed to hear any ice. Hey, okay, you're not like you're not supposed to like disturbing make a, the ice. You're just twirling it. You're slowly twirling it around, just diluting it a little bit. Um, you know what I did forget though? A strainer. I'm gonna use my hand. Here. We're all family here. It's alcohol. This is drinks. what happens. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> See, you're trying to host a party and you're like, ah, I don't have the thing. Doesn't matter. You're going to make it work. Um, so you're going to just twirl it for a little bit. It's so funny in the you and yours classes, people will be like, they, they do like an old fashioned type drink where people twirl and it's like, <laughs> 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 it's so funny. I'm like, I got to look away. Like, yeah. um, but April um, from you and yours always suggests if you're having trouble to hold it down a little closer and that gives you a little bit more control. Um, so yeah, you know, just real fancy. So again, you would generally have a strainer I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can use. Just can use my hand. Look, wash my hand. It's fine. I have been eating chips. Might be a little vinegary. How about that, Gina? A little salty <laughs> kick to it. Um, so then we're just going to strain it into the glass. That's so cute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so like I said, you can completely batch this. And then what you can do is uh, put out a garnish bar for this if you want. Um, you could put out olives, you could put out lemon peels, you could put out rosemary like we're going to do. Um, we have seen a lot of videos, not that we spend all of our time on TikTok, but uh, with really cool garnishes on skewers. So yeah. like you take a an anchovy and like wrap it around an olive and then skewer it and put it in your martini. Can you imagine? You can like, put a, like a chunk of cheese on there too. Yes, like you just have like a cute little cup like this, and you put a bunch of garnishes in it, and then people just come up and grab they just it. Take it's their just like, put it right in. Come on. Um, so if you want to get a little more of the rosemary flavor, you can smack it, and that kind of brings out. And you can either just lay it here. That just like brings out the the essence. The oils. You know, the oils. Thanks, Sarah. Or you can dunk it in there like that. Whatever. I think we need a little bit smaller one. All right. See, Sarah's aesthetically like this is you know. There you go. You could even put like a cranberry in there. You know, Ooh, that's kind of cute. That's cute. Right? There you go. And then you have a martini. Gina, I'm going to hand this to you because she's Ooh. working hard over here. Thank you. Now, Gina, we know that Roger is a martini drinker. Are you a martini drinker? I am. Okay. Ooh, gin. 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 Okay. gin. Mm -hmm. He's vodka. I yeah, I know. I know. I didn't want to call Sorry. him. I didn't like want to call him out. But... He's a kangaroo. You'll have to take it home for him, for him to try the gin martini. You should take one. Gonna do it. Does he drink it with more dirty though? Does he more like dirty all, pepperoncinis, not, okay. olives, uh, pepperoncinis. anything salty? Oh He's God. tossing it in there. We might have mm -hmm. to do a, another cocktails and cheese and do like mm -hmm. a dirty martini with cheese. Would be oh God. Yes. Like dunk a manchego in there. Oh, yes, even that's exactly that. what I was exactly. thinking. A shard of par parm in there. Oh yes, I've had a parmesan cocktail before. Oh. 
All right, cheers, mm. you guys. Sarah's cheers. busy, so she doesn't get any. Perfect timing. Look, I'm cheersing cheers. with the food. Look at these. Ooh. Yes. Ooh. Do you see how the outer edges nice. puffed up further and the tomato and the cheese stayed perfectly inside? Wow. Well There's done. a little bit of oozing, but that There's you always can. a little bit of oozing. What are you going to do? <laughs> you can't avoid that. <laughs> these are going to be so hot. So we're yeah, going to need a minute. Gonna, we're not going to eat them this You're going to... Um, they're gonna taste even better at room temperature too, because this is gonna be like scorching, and then they'll still be delicious. But look how nice! They look really nice. Instead of the butter, you can see that like little bits of the butter fat and the herbs around the outside got a little toastier. That was just my preference because I wanted the flavor. If you wanted to avoid that, if you don't like how it looks, you could use an egg wash on the outer edge mm. and just do the garlic butter under the cheese. But that's up to you. I was just, you know, why waste an egg when I've already got the garlic butter and it tastes good. Also, honestly, we were like, how are we going to transport one raw egg to everybody <laughs> in the kiss? I could have put it in a deli cup. Like, yeah, already cracked that's it. true. That's but, true. That's, you know, and then you got people with egg allergy. Yeah. We're, like, hypersensitive yeah. to yeah. egg people. Yeah. Egg people, as we call them. <laughs> we still love you, egg people. Look at this. So how would you serve this, Sarah? Would you just, like, put the whole thing on a plate? Would you cut them in half, maybe? Um... Oh, I mean, you could make smaller ones if you really wanted to. I think this is a fun size for like a more heavy act yeah, sort I think of thing. So. Um, people get like, it's almost like a sandwich with a, a yeah. mini one. I would just wait till they cooled and then the cheese will start to congeal a little bit too. Mm. You can even just like put them in a bread basket with a towel, Ooh, you know, yes. make it look cute. It doesn't have to be on a platter. Yeah. I forgot a spatula. Oh. Forgetting everything. Yeah, I mean, that's okay. We might not. It'll cool faster yeah. if I put it on the cutting board. Beautiful. Well, mm -hmm. we might have to eat this after post filming, but. Oh, look how gooey. Sarah. Oh my God, see it's how beautiful. Good that looks? And you, have you, like, do you ever make puff pastry or it's just like, why, why no, would you? No, it's not really something you make. I mean, you make it one time when you're in culinary school just to make it. Yeah. But you just, you don't make it. You buy it. Okay. At the grocery store. Everyone has it. Everyone's is good. Okay, great. Yeah. Awesome. Do we have any favorites for the evening? Anyone? Any comments? We'll see what everyone says. Look, it's like I'm dunking a little Christmas tree. I'm like stirring it. You could like dunk this in the martini. Ooh. No, I'm just kidding. I could. That. Wonderful pairings. Tasted wonderful. Excellent. But everyone's pastries turn out. Mm -hmm. I want to know. Yeah, One question. How to keep pa puff pastry from being um, still doughy? A little Is bit just, of flour. Okay. Yeah, so it comes frozen. This was a thawed in the fridge overnight. It was thawed in the fridge a little bit longer than that because of the transfer between shops, like to get it to you guys. Um, so it was a little bit soft. If you want to put it back in the freezer for maybe like 15 minutes to firm up a little bit, mm. if it's sticky, like to the touch, like has moisture on it, just a touch of flour. Um, but just getting it a little bit more cold because puff pastry is layers of dough and butter, dough and butter, dough mm -hmm. and butter. Um, the, getting the butter cold again is going to help to firm up the pastry. Awesome. Really nice. Look at this. It cut mine in half. Yeah, Ooh, that's even like nice. You know? Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I have to give a shout out real quick. This shirt, it says Mistletoe Madness. We dress up <laughs> as holiday. Sarah looks super cute. Oh, my, I have a sweatshirt on. Everyone loves your uh, headband. Oh, thank you. Yes, I right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can feel it. <laughs> Um, this is my dad's. He's been wearing this for like, I don't know, 30, 40 years. Like there are pictures of him wearing it when I'm like a little child running around. So mm, this is a tried and true holiday sweatshirt. Is it good? It's delicious. Try it. It's not too hot. Oh, okay. I promise. Mm. See what you think. Oh, yeah. Oh, really like I like it. I know. So good. And I like it with the Grayson. If you are worried it's a little too funky, I don't think it is. But mm. you can always use brie or something, right? Totally. Yeah, or even like shredded cheddar. Like, yeah, whatever. I exactly. think any cheese would work nicely. Yeah. Shout out from pistachio pistachio to your dad. Ah, yes. Yes. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us again for another holiday class, another cocktail yeah, class. Yeah, we appreciate you. Class. We love yeah. doing this. If you want to keep these virtuals going, obviously let us know. I mean, we keep selling tickets, so we know they got to keep going. Um, but we've got some classes coming up. These are our last few classes of November. We do take a little break around Thanksgiving time because we're tired. <laughs> we're all recovering, <laughs> all so of us. Tired. Um, but so, if you're free this week, Monday, tomorrow already, um, Rachel's doing a Loire Valley wine and cheese class at Vino Carta in Solana Beach. Mm -hmm. um, Tuesday, 
Our North Park shop is doing a around the world wine and cheese at Bottlecraft. So Mary Grace and Jean, I believe, will be teaching that one. Mm -hmm. They're super fun. I will be attending. So if you want to come hang out, I'm yeah. going to be taking some photos. She's and... much shorter in real life, in case you can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. That's why I'm sitting. <laughs> Then for beer week, um, we're doing two different cheese and charcuterie plate making classes at Epic. The Wednesday class is at their La Jolla um, location. The Thursday class is at their Vista location. So if you want to have some beer paired with some platter making, Dawn's going to be there to teach you how to make a little plate. You'll be able to eat, drink, and it'll be super fun. And Epic is like by far, I think, not by far, I like other breweries, but I love Epic beers they're the best good. had my rehearsal dinner situation there oh, so yeah, yeah yeah i'm just they're they're doing good stuff over there so you yeah. should definitely check them out and check out that class yeah well thanks for coming everyone it. thank you um yeah we're getting ready for the holidays it's happy it's november oh, oh, oh. Need to go home. Go home <laughs> <and> go <to laughs> are you listening to christmas music yet i hope you are because i was today <laughs> yeah you were you were all right cheers, cheers everyone, everyone. Good. Poor girl. Yeah, it was so good. Everybody just, yeah, most.